Wonderful. Thanks, Tim. And thanks very much to Share Cafe for putting on the event. And thanks to everybody uh, for dialing in and taking the time to listen to us today. And I'm very excited to tell you about Aravara Therapeutics, uh, where we are, but certainly where we see ourselves uh, moving forward. Uh, if you just move to the next slide and the next one. Great. So Aravella is a, a biotechnology company. And so what that means is we're committed to helping people live longer and healthier lives. And to do that, uh, we're working on creating really groundbreaking technologies that we think can have a big difference uh, in this space, in particular for the, the conditions Tim just mentioned, oncology, but also conditions that affect the central nervous system. And the key guiding principles for us, uh, we are patient centric, we're data driven and milestone focused. Uh, we are accountable, honest, and we act with integrity. And certainly for this space, uh, drug development, it is, it is difficult. So we need to be persistent and really take a, a never give up attitude. Next slide, please. And in terms of the company overview, so we, as to mentioned, we're currently valued at about 25.8 million. We don't think that reflects the value of the technologies that we've got in the company. Uh, particularly with an EV of, of 17 million, as well as the, the caliber of the people that we've uh, only recently recruited to the team. As of the end of December, we had about $8.8 .8 million cash in the bank, uh, but we are in the, in the process of uh, finalizing a, a fully underwritten $1.5 million SPP. And in terms of our shareholders, we just completed a placement uh, at the beginning of the year, and we're delighted to have uh, a well-known investor in this space, Merchant, join our register. So they've had a number of successes in biotech companies, uh, but importantly for us, they understand the investment horizon and of course the, the risks, but also the returns that can come with investments in this space. And we're also pleased that we've got a number of, again, sticky institutional and, and, uh, and high net worth individuals at the top end of the register. Next slide, please. So in terms of our major focus area cancer, I think it's pretty clear to say that it, it is and continues to be a major health issue. And it's, I don't think we find too many people in the world that uh, haven't been infect, affected in some way by this disease. And that's really primarily because of the, the, the prevalence. And, and we saw in 2020, there was approximately 19.3 million new cancer cases. Uh, in 2020 alone as well, there's about close to 10 million deaths reported. And for the space that we're working in, it's what we call a type of therapy is known as a biologic. And that market's expected to reach 143 billion or so by 2026. So it's still, in terms of a, a disease area, it's enormous. And of course, as a market, it's also equally the same. Next slide, please. And even more specifically, the type of therapy that we're developing at Aravella, it's what we call a cell therapy. And they have really revolutionized the way we think about cancer treatment. And largely that's off the back of the impressive cure rates that we've seen from these types of technologies. And as of February 2022, so this year, there's only five approved what we call CAR-T products, uh, and they're now approved to treat a number of different blood types of blood cancers. And just looking over on to the right-hand side, it was only last week or so that there was a recent article that actually reported on the, the patients that were included in the early uh, development research stage of these types of therapies. And it's quite remarkable that 10 years on, uh, some of these patients that had a particular form of leukemia are still cancer free. And so that's, that's why we're particularly excited because cure is a lovely word to be using uh, when we think about cancer treatment and not something we use terribly often. Next slide, please. And so just to give you an overview of what this therapy looks like um, and how it works, we actually, I've, I've depicted it in this little circle over here on the right. Uh, we start with, for the, all the approved therapies, we start with a patient and actually collect their blood. The immune cells are taken and those immune cells going over to step two, uh, they what we call genetically reprogrammed to produce what's called a chimeric antigen receptor or CAR for short. And that's indicated by the little red uh, markers on the surface that actually enables those immune cells to, to go into the body and target a particular form of cancer that we tell it to and trigger its destruction. And so at stage three, the cancer cells are grown up into much larger numbers, and then they're given back to that particular patient in order for the therapy to do what it needs to do. Now, what's unique about our therapy is we use what are called INKT cells. So they are different from what's currently approved. And we have two advantages. At step one, we don't start with a, a patient sample. We can start with a healthy donor 
uh, which gives us a lot more flexibility in how we create the product and significantly improves the supply chain. And then at step four, prior to injection, we'll able, be able to freeze our, our therapy and have it stored in a freezer ready for use for a particular cancer patient. Next slide, please. And just to giving a bit more context on what the INKT cells are. So as I said, if we take a blood sample from a, a, a healthy human, what we have inside that blood sample is a, a range of different immune cells. And I've depicted a few here called macrophages, NK cells or T cells. And of course, the cells that we're working on uh, highlighted in blue, INKT cells. And we can consider those as soldiers of our immune system. Their job is to go around, look for things that don't belong and trigger its destruction. So that might be bacteria, it might be COVID. Um, and why we've depicted the INKT cells up the top as an armed soldier is because they are one of the most potent naturally occurring immune cells. They already naturally target and kill cancer cells. And not only that, they actually recruit other immune components once they've started that killing. But as I mentioned before, we can use these cells because they don't cause a condition, what's called graft versus host disease, uh, which other immune cells can cause. And that's what enables us to, to be able to give these from a healthy donor uh, to a patient. And importantly, what we've seen for a group of cancers is that when we arm them with the car that I mentioned before, we actually have better activity over the approved therapy. So we're in effect, we're hoping that more effective product that we can roll out at scale because we've got a better manufacturing process. Next slide, please. Now, in terms of the cell therapy commercial landscape, uh, it's one that has and continues to generate uh, enormous commercial activity. And on the left-hand uh, table there, you can see just a, a snapshot of acquisitions, partnerships, and collaborations that have uh, been undertaken in the space, starting with two of the most notable up the top there, uh, Gilead acquiring Kite and Celgene acquiring Juno. Uh, that both of those two, one was 11.9 billion, billion, the other 9 billion. Uh, but right the way through, we're still continuing to see throughout uh, 2021, a number of very high value strategic partnerships. And, and again, I think it's still a very exciting space to be a part of, again, largely because of the, the prospects of these types of therapies. And so again, on the right hand side, we've just put a snapshot of capital raises in this space throughout 2021. And it's clear that there's still an enormous appetite for investors to, to uh, be involved in this space. And for this type of therapy, uh, specifically cell and gene therapies, we're expecting that market to be about 12.9 billion by 2026. So it is substantially sized. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned before, there are a number of different immune cells, uh, T cells, NK cells that have um, also been used for these types of therapies. And when we look at the total number of companies for those two types of therapies, it's in the order of hundreds of companies and hundreds of clinical trials ongoing. And so what I'm depicting here on this slide, it's, it's the INK T cell specific company. And as, as of today, we believe there are actually only four companies working on this particular cell platform. So it does put us in a very unique position. And in the last eight or nine months or so, we've seen a fair bit of commercial activity uh, for all of these four companies, ranging from strategic partnerships uh, for a total deal value of 875 million for a Pia Bio on the far left. They're a preclinical stage company, uh, not expecting to get into the clinic until the end of 2023. So that's when human trials would begin. Uh, Cure were acquired for 185 million total deal value in May last year. And Mink um, recently listed on the NASDAQ raising 40 million with an evaluation of 94 million. And so when we look at Aravella, we licensed our, our INKT cell therapy platform technology from uh, Imperial College London, which is a top 10 university worldwide last year in June. And we also added another monoclonal antibody, which we will use as a car from one of the world's best cancer institutes in the world, the MD Anderson Cancer Center. So we do see that we're quite undervalued relative to our peers. Next slide, please. And really equally important for a, a biotechnology company is having a, a world-class team. And that's what we've assembled again over the last uh, eight or nine months. So our chairman, uh, Paul Hopper, is quite well known in the biotechnology sector in Australia. He currently chairs uh, four ASX listed companies and probably most notable on his record is uh, he guided Viralytics to a $502 million sale to Merck in 2018. Uh, myself, I have a PhD in biochemistry before moving into drug development and venture investing. 
uh, and then joined Aravala as the CEO in 2020. Uh, now, the next four people we have recruited over the last six to eight months, uh, Dr. Deborah Barton is a non-exec director. She's a medical doctor and oncologist by background. She's currently the chief medical officer of Charisma Therapeutics, uh, and they actually just recently announced a deal with um, Moderna, and that uh, constituted a $45 million upfront payment plus undisclosed milestones. And Dr. Liz Stone on the bottom left, she's also been appointed as a director, formerly a, an assistant professor at, professor at Cornell University uh, before moving into large pharma for clinical development. And now she is a, an executive partner at a well-known biotech specific venture capital fund in the US MPM Capital. Uh, she was also the interim CEO of a company, uh, Semi Therapeutics, that was acquired uh, in 2019 for 950 million US. And our last two um, new appointees, Dr. Sandy Buchanan, she's got more than 20 years of experience manufacturing cell therapies. This is one of the key challenges for the field. So we're delighted to have somebody uh, that's been doing this for the bulk of their career. And Dr. Minnie Barathan, who joined at the beginning of February this year, and we, we were able to get her out of a well-known cell therapy company, Selectus, but she's also had uh, more than 15 years experience in the field of immunology uh, and more than 12 years specifically developing cell therapies. So we're very pleased with the team that we have assembled. Next slide, please. And in terms of our pipeline on the cell therapy side of things, we have two main uh, targets at the moment. The first up the top is ALA 101. Uh, that's in the preclinical stages and it's to treat a form of blood cancer called a lymphoma that produces CD19. And as I said, we licensed that technology from Imperial College London. And what we're doing at the moment is working through the stages of manufacturing before we can take that into a phase one clinical trial, which is when it first gets used in humans. Uh, for ALA 104, that's the technology that we just acquired from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. It's also in the preclinical stages. And again, we're looking forward to advancing that uh, towards clinical trials. We also have an oral spray platform where we convert drugs from solid dose forms into oral sprays. And our most advanced product in that program uh, is called Zolpimist, which is for short-term insomnia. And we've got two commercial partners, uh, Starter uh, for commercialization in Australia and Teva. And we're expecting that to be commercialized in Australia and potentially Chile in 2022. Next slide, please. And I'll just sum up there. I think, uh, as I said, what we've managed to assemble is a, a world, a, a company that's got world leading partnerships with outstanding uh, research institutes and cancer institutes with Imperial College London and the MD Anderson Cancer Center. That gives us an, an allergeneic or an off the shelf platform where we've got now two targets to uh, chase after two blood cancer, two forms of blood cancer and potentially solid tumors. Uh, as a group, we will continue to leverage the ex expertise of the team to source, evaluate and acquire new innovative technologies. As I said, the, the team we've built is world-class and we'll continue to build that out. Um, but as an organization, we are very data-driven uh, using uh, scientific principles to find the technologies and also the clinical areas where we'll go, we'll move into. Uh, but certainly now we see ourselves sitting in a position where we're the only ASX listed company working with this type of platform, uh, the only company worldwide with a car that we're using to target the DKK1 peptide from MD Anderson Cancer Center so that we are positioned nicely for growth. And I'll just uh, pass to the next slide for my contact details, but thanks again to everybody for listening and thanks to Tim and the team at Share Cafe for putting this on. Thanks, Michael. Um, you've got a well-known founder in uh, Paul Hopper. He's uh, a biotech entrepreneur. And as you said, he's uh, got several successes with uh, Viralytics in particular, and he's associated with Imogen, Radio, mm. Radio Farm, Trimeric, et cetera. So he's got quite the portfolio. What, what role does he play and, and what does he bring to the table? Yeah, so he's, he's our chairman. Uh, and certainly for myself, um, learning from somebody like Paul uh, and getting access to relationships and networks is, is quite important uh, because we are looking to deal with the best cancer research institutes in the world. And certainly uh, Paul's reputation for a lot of those uh, precedes him. So we've been able to, uh, to work with a lot of those groups and it certainly helps when you've got um, contacts in those institutions already. And you had a slide there where it compared yourselves to some of the, the, the ink um, sort of biotech companies. Where are they in terms of their development relative to, to where you guys are? Yeah, the first one I showed, Pia Bio, 
that's actually probably late, uh, earlier stage than us, not expecting to get to the clinical trial stage of drug development until the end of 2023. We are hoping to, to reach that point faster. Uh, and they, they just did a, a deal with Kite Pharma, a, a very well-known cell therapy company for 875 million. So it does demonstrate that there is potential for early stage um, commercial activity in the space. Uh, the other two, Cure and, um, and Mink, they are early stage phase one. So they're, they're, they are a bit further along than us, but still not a, not a huge amount further. So there's a, there's a good benchmark for, for investors to, to compare themselves with the value in the market. That's right. And I'll, I'll just point it out, but Mink actually um, only recently had a valuation of about 650 million US. But I think with the there has been a bit of a challenge for biotech stocks across the US and also Australia in the last few months. So it's it's um, we're hoping that that will bounce back. Yeah, certainly, it certainly has been a, a sector of the market that um, has been hit re relatively hard. Now, can you give us um, some more colour on timing and milestones? I know you touched on it, but just quickly, what are the next sort of uh, milestones to uh, emerge? Yeah, absolutely. So for the uh, our most advanced product, the iron, the CAR19 iron KT cell therapy, what we need to do is manufacture the product uh, at what we call GMP grade so that we can get that into clinical trials. And so we recently announced that we've selected the manufacturer for, for two of the most important components, uh, what are called a plasma DNA and the lentiviral vector. So we've kicked that work off uh, and now we're just going through that process of getting those two materials made. The next step that we're hoping to complete by the end of this quarter is to select the actual cell manufacturer. Again, it's a very important decision. Um, and once we've we've got the first two materials, they, they dovetail into the cell therapy manufacturer. And once we've got all those materials together, we start phase one clinical trials. And for the, um, the other therapy, l 101 at slightly earlier stage, where what we're going to be doing is taking the therapy as it exists today. So it's been used in a different cell, the T cell, and they've got excellent data in blood cancers, lung cancer, um, pancreatic cancer and breast cancer. But what we're going to be doing is taking that, that portion of the, the monoclonal antibody or the CAR and combining that with our INKT cell therapy. And so that will be done over the course of this year. And we're hoping that we'll actually have a better activity uh, and that will be in animal models, but better activity in, in that uh, setting when we've got that in our INKT cell therapy platform. And then we'll kick off the manufacturing uh, campaign for that product as well before taking that into clinical trials.